Today, Operation Anti Spruik in the Illawarra. Hi again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance and Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, this is another in our series of anti spruik videos where, courtesy of Cookie Boy, we go through some examples of price reductions of listed properties in a particular area. Now, it's worth saying this is not a scientific analysis insofar that it may or may not be statistically significant. But when you start seeing clumps of houses in particular areas discounted from their previous asking price, then maybe swallows do make summers after all. And as always, we'll be using data from our core market model as part of our analysis, where we pull information from our household surveys and other sources. And this allows us to form a view as to what's happening down at a postcode level. We can slice and dice the data multiple ways and of course apply our scenarios to think about where property prices may go ahead. Now it's worth saying that our analysis looks at mortgage stress, the price trajectory, the buying and selling intentions, the migration statistics, the economic data through the core market model, through our scenarios, and that allows us to form a view down at a postcode level. It's not predictive, it's just indicative. And by the way, if you would like to have a specific conversation about a suburb, we do offer that as a one-to-one -one service. It's an individual confidential discussion and it's not a financial advice conversation. It is about property and the data that we're seeing from our analysis. But we can look at underlying trends and I can look at the stress data, the home price data and perhaps form some views about where prices may trend ahead based on our scenarios. Now this normally takes an hour or so either by phone or by Zoom. And there is a fee involved simply because of the costs involved and time involved in pulling the information together. And we're booking at the moment three to five weeks ahead. And if you want to go to my blog, you can see details there. Contact me and uh, I'll send some further information. Anyway, we're looking at the Illawarra this time, and that's the area south of Sydney. And I've highlighted on this particular chart the postcodes that we're looking at today. It's quite interesting because it's been quite affected by high demand from Sydney until quite recently. Prices have been moving up quite fast. In some cases, they've been up more than 25 to 30 percent over the last year. However, things are changing now and prices are beginning to ease back. So today we're going to look at some specific examples of price reductions in this area, thanks to Cookie Boy. And also I'll share some information from my models. So we're going to start with postcode 2516, which is Bulleye. And here's an example of a house on 561 squares. And it was listed on the 25th of July with a price guide of 2.95 to 3.245 million. Now on the 6th of August, it has a price guide of 2.99 million. It's got four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a couple of garages. It's a house. And here's the information from my model for that particular postcode. It's worth saying that the postcode count is relatively low. This is around 2,495 households. I'll also make the point that this is based off the 2021 baseline census data, which came out quite recently. And there we can see that 31.9% own their homes outright, 46.6% are borrowing and 21.5% are renting. And at the moment, there are 34% of households in mortgage stress. That's a cash flow measure. So managing money in, money out. If they are spending more than they're earning, they're in stress. If they've got a mortgage, they're in mortgage stress. If they've got a rental property and they're paying rent, they're in rental stress. And half of households in this postcode are in rental stress. And we also have an aggregated measure taking account of stressed investors to give us the overall picture in terms of financial stress. Now, we run some scenarios looking at where prices may move over the next three years based on three scenarios. The best case scenario is that interest rates are cut quite quickly next year, immigration powers up and we don't go into any sort of recession. That's the best case scenario. The base case is that interest rates will be lifted higher for longer 
And as a result of that, the economy does experience a bit of a shock and unemployment rises. And the worst case scenario is where inflation is stubborn, interest rates go a lot higher, and we're also impacted by some of the international factors, for example, a slowdown in China and issues with energy internationally and those other factors. And so you can see that for houses, the best case scenario over three years is still a rise up about 10%. Cumulatively speaking, that is. The base case, which is my most expected scenario, is a fall of 12% over three years. And the worst case is a fall of about 30% over the next three years. And that would take prices back to below where they were before the COVID run-up. We also have data on the average taxable income in the postcode, which is around $95,900. And the investment returns typically from a gross investment return are around 3.4%. Net investment returns not particularly flash at 0.4%. And it's worth just highlighting again that the gross investment return is the combination of the price of the property relative to the theoretical gross rent that you might command from it. The net investment return takes account of reality, including the vacancy possibly in the property sometimes, and also the costs of managing the property. So the bottom line here is that there is a bit of pressure on some households, and uh, that is perhaps going to put more downward pressure on prices later. Now let's go to postcode 2529. That's in the Shell Harbour area. And there are quite a few properties listed, so we'll go through a, th a few of them. This first one was listed 253 days ago. And it was last on the market at 3.9 million on the 2nd of February 2022. Then the guide price on the 20th of July was updated to $3.6 million. And it's worth highlighting the fact that this was a house with three bedrooms, three bathrooms on 289 squares. So a pretty small plot. But of course, it clearly has harbour views. Here's another one in the same postcode. This is being listed 40 days ago on the 8th of July. And then it was a guide of 875,000 to 895,000. Now on the 9th of August, it dropped to 840,000. A three bedroom, one bath property on 611 square meters. And here's another example. And this is actually at Flinders, again in the same postcode. And this was listed 82 days ago on the 27th of May. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms on 676 squares. Listed at 1.55 million. Now reduced on the 27th of July to 1.495 million. Now here's another one in Shell Cove. Five bedrooms, three bathrooms on 957 squares. Listed 117 days ago on the 22nd of April 2022. And on the 10th of May, it was on at $2.2 million. Now it's been reduced to $2 million guide on the 18th of July 2022. And another one in Shell Cove again. Five bedrooms, three bathrooms, a house again on 648 squares. It was listed 261 days ago on the 29th of November 2021. And originally on at 1.95 to 2.1 million. Now it's at 1.795 to 1.85 million. And here's another one in Shell Cove again. A four bedroom, two bathroom house. And listed 54 days ago on the 23rd of June. Note, note the gross rental yield is just 2.88%, which is very low. The guide price was 1.45 million on the 10th of August 2022. And then it was taken down to 1.395 the day later. And here's another one again in Shell Cove. 2.29% the gross rental yield. So that's another low return. Listed 82 days ago on the 26th of May 2022. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a house. And it was listed at 1.79 to 1.86 million. Now it's on at 1.75 million on the 28th of July. And another one in Shell Cove, gross rental year here at 2.14%, listed 115 days ago on the 24th of April. 
four bedrooms, two bathrooms. It's a house on 682 squares. And it was at 1.95 to 1.995. Now it's at 1.88 million on the 15th of July. And looking at the postcode 2529, you can see there that it includes Flinders, Shell Cove and Shell Harbour. And overall, there are more than 10,000 households in that particular area. 34% own outright, but 40% are borrowing and 25% are renting. And you'll see there that mortgage stress is above 40%, rental stress is above 40%, and overall households in financial stress are around 30%. And then in terms of our scenarios, well, the best case scenario is a rise of about 11% over three years cumulative, but the base case is a fall of 11% over three years and the worst case is a fall of nearly 30 percent and it's worth noting that the gross investment returns on average are around 3.5 percent but the net investment returns are negative so many people are losing money on investment properties in this particular area and in fact we have 11.5 percent of stressed investors there as well and the taxable income on average was just seventy nine thousand two hundred twenty six dollars now we'll go to postcode 2533, Kiyama, a bit further south of Wollongong. This was listed 33 days ago on the 15th of July. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms. It's a house on 674 squares. The guide price on the 3rd of August was 2.95 to 3.2. Now it's selling at 2.75 million on the 14th of August. And here is another one in Kiyama. It was listed on the 23rd of June this year. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms, 480 squares. It's a house. Originally, it was on at 1.99 million. Now it's on at 1.85 to 1.92 million. Now, here's another property in the same postcode, but it's a little bit further out. Listed 207 days ago on the 21st of January 2022. It's a five bedroom, three bathroom property on 1,317 square meters. It's a house. It was originally on at 2.95 million, now reduced to 2.65 million on the 15th of July 2022. And here is the data for that particular postcode. There, there are around 6,800 households in the postcode. 47% own outright, 34% are borrowing, and 18% are renting. We see there are 21.4% of mortgage stress borrowers. 82.3% of renters have struggles paying their rents and overall financial stress is at 28%. And on a scenario basis, best case scenario is a rise of about 7.5% over three years. The base case for houses is 14.7% down over three years. The worst case is down 33% over three years. And the gross investment returns around 3.4%. The net investment returns down minus 0.3%. The average taxable income is at 86.274, according to the ATO. Now we'll look at postcode 2534. This is Jeren Gong, so this is further south than Kayama. This is four bedrooms, three bathrooms, it's a house, and it was 1.65 to 1.175 now, but it was actually on some time back at 2 to 2.2. 2 million and it's obviously had a bit of a checkered history because the price continues to fall. And here's another one in Jerengong again. This was listed just 21 days ago. It's originally on at 1.75, now it's at 1.695. It's a four bedroom house with three bathrooms on 598 squares. And one more in Jerengong, listed 27 days ago, four bedrooms, two bathrooms on 718 squares. It's a house and it was on at 1.55 to 1.65 on the 2nd of August. And now the new price is 1.495 to 1.575. And if we look at this particular postcode, postcode 2534, there are 2,225 households in the area. A quarter of them are in mortgage stress, but 60% of renters are having difficulty maintaining their rental payments. Scenarios are a positive 
best move over three years of 10.7%. The base case is a fall of 12% over three years. The worst case is a fall of 30% over three years. The gross investment return is 3.5%. The net investment return is negative, down 0.4%. And the average taxable income, according to the ATO, is $86,910. Now we go to postcode 2515. This one's at the rule. This is a five-bedroom, two-bathroom house on 789 squares. It was listed 50 days ago on the 28th of June, and it was guided on the 21st of July at 1.89 million, but now it's on the market at 1.8 million on the 5th of August. And here's another one, this time in the same postcode, but Austin Mir, just up the road, listed 90 days ago, four bedrooms, two bathrooms on 556 square metres. And this was on the 28th of July on at 1.95 to 2.145. Now the auction guide is 1.8 million. And in terms of postcode 2515, there's 4,395 households in the postcode. 39.9% own outright, 41% of borrowing and 19% of renting. 34.6% of mortgage borrowers are in stress. Half of renters have rental stress. And the overall financial stress in the postcodes is 35.7%. Over the next three years, the best case scenario is a rise of about 8.4%. The base case is a fall of 14.2%. And the worst case is a fall of 32.9%. Gross investment returns are around 35 Net investment returns just positive at 0.1%. And the average taxable income is $105,223, according to the ATO. Now we'll go to postcode 2500 in the heart of Wollongong. This first one is in North Wollongong. This is a seven-bedroom, three-bathroom house on 740 squares. And it was listed 43 days ago on the 4th of July. And on the 13th of July, it was at 1.75 million. Now on the 4th of August, it's dropped to 1.699 million. Here's another one in postcode 2500, actually in Wollongong itself. Gross rental yield of 2.98%, they say, listed 119 days ago on the 20th of April 2022. Three bedrooms, one bathroom on 613 squares. It's a house and it was listed on the 25th of May at 1.1 to 1.15 million. And now on the 14th of August, it's on market at 1.05 million. Another one in postcode 2500. This is Mangerton, a four bedroom, three bathroom house on 569 squares, listed 76 days ago on the 2nd of June 2022. On the 15th of July, it was on at 1.35 million. And then on the 19th of July, it was on at $1.2 million. Another one in 2500 at West Wollongong, listed 35 days ago on the 13th of July. The original guide on the 15th of July was $850,000. It's now $830,000. And it's a two-bedroom, one-bathroom house on 556 squares. And here's another one, again in Wollongong, 2500. The gross rental yields around 3.72% at best, listed 90 days ago on the 19th of May. And on the 16th of July, it was on 890000 to 920000 and now it's on 840 to 890,000 on the 28th of July. And if we look at 2500, you can see there that there are around 18,900 households in the postcode based on the latest census data. 25% own outright, 24% are borrowing, but 49% are renting. And we see the 24% of households with mortgage stress who are borrowing. 67 or two thirds of rentals are in rental stress. And so the overall financial stress metric is at 47%. And over the next three years, houses may, at the best case, rise up to 7.6% cumulative. The base case is a fall of 14.8% and the worst case is a fall of 33%. Gross investment returns on average around 3.5%. Net investment returns just 0.2%. And the average taxable income is around 79703 according to the ATO. Now, if I go to postcode 2517, Wununa, three-bedroom, one-bathroom house on 626 squares, listed 26 days ago on the 21st of July. Gross rental yield reported at 3.08%. 
Price guide on the 28th of July was 1.28 million. Now it's at 1.22 million on the 16th of August. Another one in the same postcode. This is actually four bedrooms, two bathrooms on a house and 489 squares. Listed 55 days ago and on the 15th of July at 1.7 million. Now 1.6 million. That's on the 16th of August. And one more. Again, in the same area, in fact, Russell Vale, just next door to Wununa. That was a three-bedroom, one-bathroom house on 746 squares, listed 98 days ago on the 11th of May. And on the 15th of July, it was on at 1.08 to 1.12 million. Now it's on at 1.06 million on the 24th of July. And if we look at that particular postcode, 5,526 households in that particular area, 34% own outright, 40% of borrowing, 25% of renting. And the mortgage stress rating is 60%. The rental stress is 87%. So those are both very high counts. As a result of that, financial stress in the area is very high at 52%. And that translates to a lower expectation in terms of the best case scenario, up 2.4% over three years. The base case down 20%, the worst case down 39.3%. And the gross rental investment return is 3.5%, whereas the net investment return is 0.05, and the average in taxable income is 85,807, according to the ATO. Now we're going to look at Fairy Meadow, postcode 2519. Here's an example of a house on 544 square metres, three bedrooms, one bathroom. It was listed 82 days ago on the 26th of May. And on the 14th of July, it was on at 1.35 million. On the 17th of August, it dropped to $1.25 million. Another one in the same area with four bedrooms, two bathrooms on 601 squares. Again, a house listed 77 days ago on the 1st of June 2022. And on the 13th of July, it was on at $1.65 million. And now the price guard is $1.5 million on the 25th of July. Another one in Ferry Meadow, postcode 2519, listed 41 days ago on the 7th of July 2022. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms, 556 square metres. The guide on the 15th of July was $1.2 million. And now as at the 5th of August 2022, it's on at $1.8 8 million. And looking at my data for that particular postcode, the first thing to highlight is 6,988 households in the area, of which 38% own outright, 30% are borrowing and 31% are renting. Overall mortgage stress is at 38.1%, rental stress is at 56%, and overall financial stress is at around 39%. Looking at the trends ahead, the best case scenario is a cumulative ride of 8.1% over three years. The base case is a fall of 14% over three years. And the worst case is a fall of 32.9% over three years. The investment returns on average at a gross level of 3.4%. The net investment returns are 0.1%. And the average taxable income, according to the ATO, is 83791 now we'll go to postcode 2518. That's in Coromel. And here's an example of five bedroom, three bathroom house on 1.152 square meters, listed 112 days ago on the 27th of April. On the 16th of May, it was on at $1.59 million. Now at 15th of July, it's on at $1.53 million. And looking at the trends in that particular postcode, there are around 8,500 households of which 30% are owning outright, 31% are borrowing, 38% are renting. Overall stress is 32% for mortgages, but 81% for renters. And looking at the trends, the best case over three years, a cumulative rise of 5.1%, the base case a fall of 17.5%, and the worst case is a fall of 35%. The gross investment returns around 3.2%. The net investment return is just 0.1%. And the average taxable income, according to the ATO, is $78,098. Now we'll go to postcode 2525, Fig Tree. Here's an example of a house, four bedrooms, two bathrooms on 528 squares. 
Gross rental yield is advised at 3.23%. And it was listed at 57 days ago on the 20th of June 2022. The asking price on the 26th of July was 1.1 million. Now it's dropped to 1.05 million on the 28th of July. Another example of the same area, three bedroom, two bathroom, 923 squares house, gross rental yield of 3.39%, listed 57 days ago, listed on the 16th of July at $1.05 million. And now on the 24th of July, it's on the market at 999,000. In that same area again, another house, five bedrooms, three bathrooms, 852 square meters, listed 50 days ago on the 28th of June. The guide on the 15th of July was $990,000, now $949,000 on the 21st of July. And looking at the details in this postcode, 4,547 households in the postcode, 38% owning outright, 43% borrowing, 18% renting. Mortgage stress is at 53%. Rental stress is at 50% and overall financial stress is at 42.8%. So those are all high numbers. The scenario ahead is 7.1% best case over three years for a house. The base case is down 16% and the worst case is down 34.1%. Gross investment returns around 3.5%. The net investment returns is minus 0.1%. The average taxable income is $84,875 according to the ATO. Now we're going to 2528, and that's Wing Dang. Three bedroom, two bathroom house on 556 squares, listed 26 days ago on the 21st of July. And on the 28th of July, it was at 1.35 million. Now on the 7th of August, it's $1.295 million. Another example of a house with three bedrooms and one bath in the same area, currently listed at 920,000. And originally it was on at $1.025 million. It's been listed actually for quite some time. One more, yeah, this time Mount Warangal, 2528, three bedroom, one bathroom house on 556 squares, listed 47 days ago on the 1st of July 2022. On the 26th of July, it was at 649,000 to 679,000 guide price. On the 14th of August, price to sell 649,000. And Barrack Heights 2528, listed 71 days ago, three bedroom, one bathroom on 560 squares, again a house. The 7th of June 2022 it was listed. And on the 21st of July, it was on at 760,000 to 790,000. Now on the 8th of August at 720,000. Another one in the same area, price guide 750,000, two bedrooms, one bathroom, 556 squares, originally on at 800,000, now 750 to 800,000. This one is four bedrooms, one bathroom house, and $780,000 now was originally on $899,000 in the same area. And this one at Mount Warragal, three bedroom, one bathroom house, listed 89 days ago on the 19th of May. On the 16th of July, it was on at 899 to 960,000. On the 17th of August, 840 to 890. And looking at the details for the postcode, 10,000 households, 37% owning outright, 27% borrowing, 35% renting, 35% of mortgage stressed households, 53% of rental stressed households, overall financial stress at 34%. And looking at the trends, 9.5% cumulative positive three years over the best case scenario. The best case is down 13.2% over three years. The worst case is down 31.3%. The gross investment return is at 3.4% on average. Net investment returns 0.4%. The average taxable income in the area is $68,812, according to the ATO. Now we're going to Cordo Heights, 2526, for a four-bedroom and two-bathroom house listed 49 days ago on the 29th of June. 
On the 19th of July, it was on at $1.05 million, now on the 13th of August, down to $965,000. And looking at the details in that particular postcode, just over 6,100 households, 32% owning, 43.3% borrowing, 24% renting, and 35.5% of borrowers in mortgage stress, 60% of renters in rental stress, and overall financial stress is 33%. The best case scenario is a positive rise of 10% over three years. The mid case, the base case, is down 12.6% over three years cumulative. The worst case is a fall of 31.2% cumulative over three years. And looking at the gross investment returns, 3.4%. Net investment return minus 0.2%. The average taxable income, according to the ATO, was 81686 Now we go to DAPTO, postcode 2530. And here is a three-bedroom, one-bathroom house on 556 squares. And it was listed 41 days ago on the 6th of July. On the 5th of August, it was 650 to 690 now it's on at 649,000 on the 13th of August. Another one in the same area, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, 714 squares. Again, a house listed 62 days ago on the 16th of June. And on the 15th of July, it was on $849,000 now, 749 to $799,000 on the 25th of July. Now this is at Kunawara, same postcode, four bedroom, one bathroom, House at 624 squares, listed 91 days ago on the 18th of May. And on the 14th of July, it was at $689,000, now $649,000 on the 21st of July. And another one in DAPTO again, listed 55 days ago on the 23rd of June, three bedroom, one bathroom house on 620 squares. And on the 15th of July, it was on at $680,000. Now on the 3rd of August, it's dropped to $650,000. And looking at the data for this particular postcode, 13,359 households in the area, 32% owning outright, 45.7% borrowing and 22.2% renting. Half of those, 50% of borrowers in mortgage stress, 54% of renters in rental stress, and 15% of investors also feeling it. So 40.4% of households in financial stress. And looking at the scenarios over the next three years, the best case scenario is a rise of 8% over three years. The base case, the most likely scenario, is down 14.2% over three years. The worst case is a fall of 32.9% over three years. Gross investment returns around 3.5%. Net investment return is flat zero. And the average taxable income is 73686 according to the ATO. Now we go to Lake Heights, 2502, a four-bedroom, two-bathroom house on 1.334 squares, listed 48 days ago on the 30th of June. On the 16th of July, the price guide was $700,000. Now on the 21st of July, it's down to $650,000. Now another household in 2502, this time at Warrawong, a three-bedroom, one-bathroom house on 556 squares. It was originally listed at 799000 In fact, it was on the market initially on the 5th of May 2022, and today it's on at $729,000. And here is information in that postcode. 4,915 households, 36.9% owning outright, 26.1% borrowing, 37% renting, 26.7% of borrowers in mortgage stress, 80% of renters in rental stress, overall financial stress at 44.9%. And looking over the scenarios, the best case scenario is a rise of 5.6% over three years for houses. The base case is a fall of 17.3% over three years. The worst case, a fall of 35.7% over three years. Gross investment returns 3.4%, net investment returns 0.1%. The average taxable income is $64,627, according to the ATO. And now we go to Port Kembla, 2505. This was a three-bedroom, two-bathroom house on 525 squares, listed 34 days ago on the 13th of July. On the 15th of July, it was listed at $795,000 to $835,000 now. On the 27th of July, 
$699,000 to $750,000. And now the data for this postcode, 2,128 households of which 36.8% are earning outright, 28.7% are borrowing and 34.4% are renting. And that translates into 33.4% of mortgage-stressed borrowers, 75% of rental-stressed households, and overall financial stress at 36.5%. Positive scenarios, 8.5% over the next 36 months. The base case down 14.6%, and the worst case down 32.7%. Gross investment returns, 3.1%. Net investment returns, 0.6%. And the average taxable income is... Is 72,843 according to the ATO. So that gives you a bit of a rundown of that particular area, and I think three observations. Firstly, it's clear to me that there are movements down somewhere between 50 and 100,000, depending on the size of the property and location. And uh, interestingly, compared with a few months ago, where prices were very bullish and in fact on the way up, this is a significant change. Secondly, there is a considerable link between stressed households and some of these price falls. It's interesting that those with rental stress and mortgage stress at higher levels tend to translate also to more significant drops. And also, of course, looking at my scenarios, thinking about value in the future, more on the downside risk there. Third point is, of course, that this is information based on publicly available sources. It doesn't really take account of individual properties, their location, or indeed whether they have any structural issues. And... It is a bit self-selecting insofar that uh, Cookie Boy will have found those with falls. So it doesn't necessarily give you a feel of the whole market. But nevertheless, I think there's enough evidence from this report to show you that prices are in the way down across the Illawarra. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.